Let's begin uh, this session by looking at the very end of the first chapter of the book of Revelation, which sets the stage for chapters 2 and 3, the seven letters to the seven churches. Verse 11, chapter 1, starts this way. Write in a book what you see, and send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus, to Smyrna, to Pergamum, to Thyatira, to Sardis, to Philadelphia, and to Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that was speaking with me, and having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. And in the middle of the lampstands, I saw one like a son of man, clothed in a robe reaching to the feet, and girded across his chest with a golden sash. His head and his hair were white, like white wool, like snow, and his eyes were like a flame of fire. His feet were like burnished bronze, when it had been made to glow in a furnace, and his voice was like the sound of many waters. In his right hand he held seven stars, and out of his mouth came a sharp two-edged sword, and his face was like the sun shining in its strength. When I saw him, I fell at his feet like a dead man. He placed his right hand on me, saying, Do not be afraid, I am the first and the last, and the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore and I have the keys of death and of Hades. Therefore, write the things which you have seen, and the things which are, and the things which will take place after these things. As for the mystery of the seven stars which you saw in my right hand, and the seven golden lampstands, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven lampstands are the seven churches. Jesus, we thank you for your word to us today. As we look at these letters that you commanded John to write, that you gave him uh, for the seven churches. We recognize uh, that they meet us at the point of our need as well. They meet us right where we're at. We pray, Lord, where conviction is needed, you deliver that to our hearts. Where encouragement is needed, that you would deliver that as well. Whatever you have for us here, we pray you'd lead us into it, Holy Spirit. Uh, in your name we pray. Amen. Well, right at the end of chapter 1, we see the setup for chapters 2 and 3 of Revelation, which are specifically the seven letters to the seven churches. So you remember what we said in our last session together is uh, that there's three main genres of literature that make up the book of Revelation. There, of course, is the apocalyptic, which is a revealing uh, of what God is planning to do. There is the prophetic, which tells us not so much predicting the future, but what God's truth is and how we're to live to it. Finally, there's also the epistolary or, or letters, and just like Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, those letters, Revelation is a letter as well to the churches, and we see that here. In chapter 1, at the very beginning, God sets that standard for John. Uh, I want you to write this stuff for these seven churches. And just like Galatians was written to the church in Galatia, uh, but it also has importance to us, these seven letters written to these seven specific historical churches uh, have importance to us as well. Uh, there is a repetitive frame, refrain throughout each one of these letters. He who has an, he, he who has an ear, uh, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. So that's our, our key verse here. And we want to make sure that we hear what he has to say to these seven churches because he's also speaking it to us uh, as well. Now, these seven churches were real historical churches. They all were in Asia, the Roman province of Asia, which is all in what we would know today of as Turkey. They're all in the western part of Turkey, over near Greece, near the, uh, the Mediterranean Sea there. And they formed kind of a circuit uh, on major roads and thoroughfares. So these are churches that would have been planted that John would have likely pastored because uh, he writes these, God gives him these letters to these churches for a reason, that John is likely an overseer uh, of these, and he meant this to be sort of a circular letter. He wrote them all together, you had to take them to each one of the churches and have them read in each one of the churches. So there's stuff s specific to each church, but there's also stuff uh, general enough that all of them need to hear it. And in these letters that are from Jesus himself, but instructed to be written through John, uh, Jesus inspects his church and challenges his church. Uh, in some cases he's encouraging and in other cases he's uh, really critiquing. Now, each one of these letters has a nearly identical structure. 
uh, there is a greeting and an introduction uh, which specifies Jesus as the author in each one. And usually that introduction relates specifically to that church, as we're going to see. There's, there's some type of a, of, a, of a specific connection that the title Jesus gives himself uh, relates to that church. So the greeting and the introduction notes Jesus as the, uh, the author. Uh, then there's a body of the letter, which uh, usually has a, a praise, uh, but then also has a criticism for the church and gets specific to each church. And finally, there is a conclusion which has a plea to listen, to hear and obey what's been said uh, and a promise in most of them to those who do listen and who overcome. Question has been asked, uh, why seven churches? Uh, why not just one, like the letter to the church in Galatia and then let that be circulated around like those letters were? Uh, they weren't meant uh, just for one church. They were used in a circular fashion among the churches. Um, so why seven here? Well, this number seven, as we've seen, is an important number to God in Revelation, and it, it includes the idea of, of perfection and of completeness and of wholeness. So I don't think we should miss the, this sense that Jesus is wanting us to know that one church can't represent him in completion. Just like Paul tells us in Corinthians, the church is a body. It's made up of many different parts. Many different local churches make up the one big church. And so while each local church is important, it's not uh, on its own. There is a, a larger body that it is a part of. And so he wants us to see kind of the beauty of his diversity in churches and the unity that he wants to bring. Uh, diversity in unity and unity in diversity. Each local church has a part of uh, the truth. There's something that each church kind of does well, uh, but there's also a challenge that each local church has. And so as local churches, as pastors and lay leaders in our local churches, we, we can relate. There's specific things that our church does well, our local church, and there's specific things that that we are challenged by, that, that, that are kind of typical um, difficulties that we face. Uh, and so we have a part to play in the whole larger church, but we also uh, have some specific challenges in that. Uh, so that's an important uh, distinction to make here at the very beginning. Each one of these letters has specific importance to each one of the, the bodies of Jesus and each one uh, has some challenges as well. So we're going to take each one of these seven in order, uh, covering them as, as deeply as we can, but also as quickly as we can. Uh, and in doing so, hopefully we'll, we'll glean some really good meat uh, from God's word here.